All right. So, modulus. When you divide something by something, there's always a remainder, right? So, so that reminder is what modulus is. So if you have, say, 5 divided by 3, that's 1, 3, and how much remainder? Three. 2. Modulus gives you that 2. All right? So again, let's do something else over here. If I have <coughs> integer a set to 13, and I'm going to say printf percent d, and I'm going to go to new line, and in here, I'm going to say a mod, say, 5. Okay? 13 divided by 5 is what? Kindergarten questions. Okay? 2, right? 2, and how much reminder? The remainder is 3, right? There you go. So, a mod 5 gives you 3. It means when I divided a by 5, there was... Uh, uh, remaining three and that's all so that's one thing it seems like a useless thing but it's one of the most useful operators that you have so that's a three are we okay with that any problem with that okay that's something that I missed to explain and this is one of the basic uh, arithmetic uh, integral arith uh, uh, arithmetic operators that we have in C language that is not, in, in mathematics that is actually a function called mod where in here it's actually an operator, okay? And the other way, uh, the other thing that you remember in math, we can write to the power of something. In C, we can't, okay? In C, we don't have 3 to power of 5. For that, either you have, we have to write a function or include math header file and use the function written in there. So that's that one. So that's mod, alt F A, 0, 1 mod.c modulus next thing we talked about uh, next thing we talked about uh, uh, logical operators we said we have and and or and we explained what and and or is remember and and or I said whenever you have two conditions that you want to check to see if the two conditions are like the, the uh, uh, to have the two condi conditions checked together to give you a result, you can either add the two conditions or or the two conditions. And we said that when you are talking about and, this is what and is. A switch like that. Okay? And we said that w condition one and two. If condition one is false, condition true is false, the light bulb is not going to go on. When the both conditions, the only way at the, an AND condition can be true is for the first condition and second condition to be on at the same time. That's the only time that they are. So A or B, A and B only is true if A is true and B is true. Are we okay with this? Remember that? Okay. And we talked about OR condition. <clears throat> we said OR condition is something like this, where you have two switches that are parallel. They are not series. So, so it's like this. And then we have a small light bulb over here and a battery. And then in, in an OR system, with OR, only one of them being on completes the circuit. Actually, this is not complete. It's going to be completely nervous. So, so what I mean is that it's going to come over here and the light bulb go on. So for an OR condition, the only way that an OR condition can go false is for the both conditions to be false. Remember that, right? Are we okay with this? Okay, now another thing that I wanted to say. <clears throat> what is true in C language? Sorry, what is false in C language? What is, it's zero. False is only zero, okay? That's a unique thing. So, and I specifically mentioned, if I say if 25, that is considered true. Anything but zero is true. And I told you, when C tells you something is true or false, is always one and zero. But when C examines a condition to see if it's true or false, it only check 
checks for falsehood. As soon as it sees it's not false, it's true, which means any value. Those if statements that you came to told me, this is only an A, it misses the condition, it didn't, okay? Because A was five is a true condition, right? All right, are we okay with this? All right, now it brings us to not, okay? We have a not, not negates everything, which means if I, if I have, if a, if I have int b, and I say b is set to a less than, uh, less than 15, what's going to be the value of b? Everybody's okay that the value is 1? <coughs> Everybody okay that that value is on? It's 1? Because A is so it's 13 less than 15, that's a correct statement. So B is going to be 1, right? <coughs> now, if I put a not in front of this, then it negates the condition. So, is 13 less than 15? Yes, so this is 1. Not 1 is 0. If it was 0, if let's say I put over here, if I put over here 10, then what does it mean? Is 13 less than 10? No, it's 0, right? Not zero is one, so B will be one. Are we okay with this? All right. Now that we have things figured out, so this is, so in here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say over here, if I can bring it over here. So B is, uh, in here is one. In here, B is zero. Okay? Now, my question is this. A is set to zero. Okay? If I say B is set to... I think somebody wants to get rescued from the air duct. Anyways, <clears throat> so... Really? Seriously? Anyways, tomorrow we're going to read the news. That, anyways, anyway. <laughs> okay, so... so B is set to not A. What is A? Zero. What is not zero? One. So B will be? Are we okay with this? Everybody's okay with that? All right. Now if I say A, A set to one. If I say B is set to not A. So this for this, B will be one. If I can type it, of course. All right. For this one, what is B? Everybody's okay with that? Everybody's okay? B beautiful. Now, next thing. A is 2,345. Okay? B is set to not A. What is the value of B? It's going to be zero. Why? Because, again, C is checking the condition. You are saying not, and you put something. It means C is going to treat A as a condition. Because it is not zero, it will be considered as? As? True, right? Because it's true, not true will be false, correct? Are we okay with this? Now your faces are all blank. Huh? It's like I'm talking in some Martian language. Everybody's going, oh, it's good. What you were saying? Because every other line, yeah, it's straightforward. So, so A because I, I just said zero, one, everybody's happy with zero and yeah. one. But remember this in C language, zero is false. Anything but zero is true. Is this anything but zero? Yes, so it's true. Not true is false, hence. Are we okay with this thing? So, what happens if I do this? B is set to not not A. Right. 
No, no, what is B? It's true, I know it's true. But what is the value of B? One. Is it one or two, or two three, four, five? It's one, remember that, right? Lots of people, by mistake, it, they think it's like negative, minus, minus A. It's not like, so what happens is that not A, the first one, not true becomes false, so it becomes zero, and not zero becomes one. This is when I told you, when C language gives you the true false, it's always zero or one. But C language examines something to see if it's true or false. Zero is false, anything but zero is true. Are we okay with this? All right, this was the second thing that I forgot to talk about last time. So, so this one, B is going to be, B is what? Zero. And this one, B is one. Save, Alt, F, A. Wrong thing. Two. All right, Alt, F, A. So this is zero, two. Uh not dot C. <laughs> All right. Next. Yes. One more time. Give me line number, please. Uh, line number 10. Uh huh. So A is one. Yeah, I set A to 2345. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because, like, um, let's put it this way not doesn't have a side effect. Okay, not is an operator that doesn't have side effect. Speaking of side effects, yes. RB has taken a Boolean value and you set it again to an integer. Like, can you set it to be thousand? Yeah. Integer, schmintager, they're all the same. It's integer. Even after setting it to a boolean. Right? Why do you think it's going to change? You have a cup of coffee, you put tea in it. Can you throw it away and put coffee again? Sure. It's a container. You can put anything in it. The fact that you put something in it, it won't change the container. The container remains the same. Okay? All right. <clears throat> now, next thing is a tricky one. We have, uh, remember I told you those people who were writing the C language, extremely lazy people. They didn't want to type too many things. So uh, that's why they created the shortened thingy, right? So plus equal means A is equal, A plus equal one is A equals A plus one. Remember those things? Now, uh, they, they created something else for plus equal one. They said that's too much. I want to be, I want to make it even easier. And that was plus plus. So you put two plus pluses, it adds one. This operator has a side effect, okay? So if I do something like this, if I say A plus plus, and I, print A, so I'm gonna say over here, A is percent D, percent D, and then I go to new line, and I'm gonna print A, it's going to print 13. It essentially adds one to the variable. So if I actually run it like this, you'll see that the output will be 14. Any problem with that? Are we okay with this? All right. So now that we know that, let's close that one up. <clears throat> you can put it postfix or prefix. So I can say plus plus a. And still affects the same way. So now if I run this beautiful program of mine, I'm going to have a 14 and a 15. Are we okay with this? All right. That's that. But there is something freaky about these things. And this is that. Let me show you. So I'm going to say over here, B is set to plus plus A. And I'm going to, this time I'm going to print B. And A. A is this one. And I'm going to say B is percent D. And I'm going to print B. So what's happening over here? 
Here A becomes 14, then it becomes 15. Now in here, plus plus A. So we said that right side of the operator happens first, right? So this becomes what? 16 and B becomes 16, and life is beautiful. So like, like this, they're both 16 and we are happy, all right? The sadness comes for the next one, which is, I say, B is set to A plus plus. Now, if I run this program, we'll see that something awkward just happened, which means A is 17, but B remains 16. What the heck? All right. The exact same thing is with minus minus. I'm not going to explain that to you. Minus minus reduces by one, OK? But I want you to put your listening ears on. This is very important, OK? The plus plus and minus minus operator, these two operators, are the only unary operators can be prefix and postfix at the same time, OK? But problem is this. If the plus plus comes before A, the action happens before the line. Okay? So if I say B is equal to plus plus A, it's as if at line 9.5, you said A is equal to A plus 1, then B is equal to A. Okay? So if plus plus comes before the variable, it happens before the line. If plus plus comes after, it happens after the line. As if first you bet you set B to A, then you add 1 to A. Are we okay with this? That's something that you need to remember. Okay, so plus plus, as, as long as you use it before the variable, is fine. <clears throat> but after, careful. All right? Remember, when you put after, it always happens after. On individual line, it don't care if it happens before or after. Right? But if it's within another operation, then you have to be careful. And <clears throat> avoid creating confusion. Whenever you looked at your code and you went, huh? It means compiler has the same feeling. OK? So if I write a code like this, A is set to plus plus C minus D plus plus Oh, so what am I doing? Minus D plus 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 A minus minus. If you write something like this, you're going to get confused. What the heck happened? So this happens before that, or that happens before. Don't do this, OK? If you want to do something like this, write it in a few lines. Whenever you're confused, it means, OK, everybody can get confused. And nobody, even you don't know what the heck is going to be the output of this thing. So don't do it. Especially when you have two things that you write, like, like something like this is extremely crazy, like plus plus B and B plus plus. OK? Now, what is the output of that program? I don't want to know. OK? I don't want to know. If anybody does something like this, they're going to fire this behind from the company in two seconds. OK, nobody wants to write a code to make people confused. Yeah, your code must be crystal clear and everybody understands. So remember, that, uh, like, it's extremely important, especially uh, when you're getting to functions, OK? Returning some, like, later on, you don't know what functions are, but you're going to write functions soon. And those functions return values. So if you return something like A++, that's a bad thing to do. Because you're saying return A and then add one to it. So essentially, you're with the, so that's not going to work out. Be careful, be careful, be careful. All right? For now, if you're uncomfortable with plus plus, you can always use plus equal one, OK? Until we get a hang of it and see how it works, all right? And I think that covers all the things that I missed from the previous lecture. Let me just check. Yeah, whenever you have many different conditions that you want to set together, OK? Um, let me just put this thing over here. Uh, by the way, now you know where C++ is coming from, okay? The name C++. C++ is a language who has one extra feature than C language. That is object orientation. 
Okay? That's why they called it C++. And everybody makes fun of the C++ language, saying that C++ language has a bug even if it is in its name, because the language has to be over, and then the feature is going to be added to it. So uh, anyway, that's a kind of Big Bang Theory type of uh, joke that nobody gets. Anyway, so, so 0, 0,3. And uh, um, what is that? Uh, mm, plus, plus dot C. All right, so we have those things. Whenever you have a condition like this, whenever you have a condition, I don't want to even do it that. I just want, I, I just need a text editor for this. So um, whenever you have a condition like this, you have A, A is set to not B or not C. If you have something like this, you can translate this to A is set to, you bring that not out, okay? Then you put, then you put that B or B, B and see here, and you change that or to an and. These two are the same. If it serves you better, you can switch one. If you see your conditions are getting too difficult to manage, remember, not something or not something could be not something and something. And the exact way. If it was an and, you could put or over here. Doesn't make any difference. OK? Either this or that. So uh, just remember that. You can demonstrate this like this. I can say over here A greater than B, B and C greater than D. Okay? If I want to apply the Morgan law to this, I should say not, okay? Then I put it over here. Now in here it becomes A greater than or equal to B, or C less than or equal to D. So these two are identical. OK? Are we OK with this? So, I, I, so what is the exact opposite of A less than B? Is A greater than or equal to B, right? So, so, so these two conditions are identical. It's something for you to know. I don't know if you're going to use it or not. And that's it. That's the thing that I missed. So now you can start your lab, and I'm going to stop recording. Any questions on this before I stop the recording? All right.